Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Guys, over the last week, we had a Bitcoin conference where we had two presidential candidates um, saying very, very positive things about what they would do with Bitcoin and crypto if they win the election. Um, and yet we are starting off this week in the red. So what in the world is going in on, guys? We're going to get into all of that. Uh, but before we get into any of that, guys, as always, if you've watched this channel, Flipside Sanctuary here is a small sanctuary uh, with a bunch of animals that they are saving um, and taking care of ab abused and neglected, abandoned animals. And I always bring you guys these sanctuaries. Um, as a, as a way that we can all kind of pitch in and help these animals out. If you guys have a few dollars, please go over to flipsidesanctuary.org. The link to that is in the description, but it is flipsidesanctuary.org. Right here on their homepage, you've got a way that you can use your debit or credit card through PayPal to donate. You can also go up here to the top, hit that donate button. Again, you've got your card that you can use through PayPal. You can send them a check. You can also Venmo, uh, support their Patreon. And then all the way down at the bottom here, they've got Amazon and Chewy wish lists. So you can send them supplies that they need. Tons of ways that you can help these animals out, guys. Uh, so go over to uh, again, it's flipsidesanctuary.org and help these guys out. It's always, always, always appreciated on my part. I'd, I'm not affiliated with them. Uh, I just try and bring you guys every month a different small animal sanctuary that we can really kind of chip in each of us and try and make a difference for them. So uh, this is probably the last video that I will be showcasing um, Flipside Sanctuary. I am going to do a video tomorrow, but it is going to be a live stream and doing uh, the sanctuaries in a li live stream is a little tricky and it doesn't doesn't always happen. So uh, go over, help out Flipside Sanctuary. And uh, again, very much appreciated. Now, let's get into what is going on um, with Bitcoin. First of all, uh, my last video, I, I did a, a video with two other uh, people, if you saw it, and we did discuss the politics surrounding Bitcoin conference. However, it was brought to my attention that I kind of glossed over a very important part of Trump's speech, and I don't know how I missed it honestly the first time um i have i have a guess but let's let's go over to this clip of trump during his speech at the bitcoin conference listen in jack uh i've heard from vivek 175 million people in some form are involved with this world of crypto and bitcoin and all of the others 175 million so when they heard that, they said, let's be nice to them, at least until after the election. Let's be nice to them until at least until after the election. Guys, in his own words, Trump is telling us, I want your votes until the election. And guys, here's the thing is he doesn't need our votes ever again. This is the second term for him. If he, if he wins uh, the election, this is his second term. So he won't be up for re-election after this. He will never need our votes ever again. So honestly, he can get in to the presidency and completely pull uh, a complete Gary Gensler flip and, you know, and, and what I mean by that is Gary Gensler talked very, very positively about Bitcoin and crypto when he was teaching blockchain technology at MIT. 
And then once he got into office, he flipped, uh, got under political pol pressure, and we've all seen the hostility since then. So I all I'm saying, guys, is in Trump's own words, he doesn't care. He doesn't care about Bitcoin. He wants your vote, and that's it. Once he's in office, I think he he throws us to the curb. And guys, you've got to remember, you know, in his first presidency, he was not friendly towards crypto. Guys, now listen, I'm going to get to the Democrats here in a minute, so don't don't get all uh, your pants in a wad and uh, shut me off here. Stick around. I I've got plenty of bad talking for all kinds of politicians. So, <laughs> but he wasn't, Trump wasn't nice. So he, you know, he called Bitcoin a fraud. He called it a scam. Uh, he called, he said it was just thin air. Um, and a lot of people say, okay, well, he was just, you know, he was unfriendly in his speech, but now he's been orange pilled, but his administration was hostile just the same as Gary Gensler and the current SEC. Uh, Jay Clayton, the previous SEC chair, was, was hostile towards crypto as well. Um, he, 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 well, for one thing, he hated Polymarket, which is a crypto uh, kind of betting and prediction market. Uh, but he also, I believe on the very last day of his his um his term as SEC chair, he's the one that sued Ripple and XRP and called XRP a security. So guys, this isn't uh, you know, this isn't isolated to Gary Gensler, honestly. We had the same kind of problems with Trump's administration. So you've got to remember that. Now, guys, like I said, I have no idea um, how I missed that comment when I watched Trump's speech the first time. Um, but right before he said that, he said this, and we're going to go over to another clip, guys. So listen, listen to this, that what he said right before that. <laughs> Let me tell you, if they win this election, every one of you will be gone. They will be vicious. They will be ruthless. They will do things that you wouldn't believe. But right now, because of me, they're leaving you alone. So please say thank you, President Trump. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Trump. Thank you. Uh... You know, apparently we're all going to be black bagged if he doesn't win, win the election. Um, and they're just going to throw us in a closet somewhere and make us disappear. Um, guys, the only thing I can think of how I missed that, that comment about him being nice to crypto and Bitcoin until the election is I may have been uh, running to the bathroom to throw up about that say say thank you to mr trump say, say thank you now guys i will give it to trump uh for making this um you know this crypto and this bitcoin thing uh bringing it to the main stage on politics so i i do give him that uh you know we've seen the democrats you know talk <laughs> talk about being nice to crypto and, and Bitcoin and reversing their hostility. Um, and I do credit Trump for that. Really, I should be thanking the, the kid in the audience at that Trump rally that asked about Bitcoin. But, you know, to, to Trump's credit, he did come out positive. Uh, so I will give him that. However, guys, he, in his own words, he is just pandering for votes. So uh, let's get into the uh, what happened yesterday, guys. So we've got uh, right here, um, maybe. <laughs> let's see. Okay, so C 
Kamala, Kamala Harris's advisors uh, reportedly reach out to the crypto industry with pro-business, responsible business message. So, I don't know, guys. It's the same thing. Same thing across the aisle. Kamala Harris is talking the talk, but when it comes to walking the walk, this is what they did. Yesterday, U.S. government moves $2 billion in seized Silk Road Bitcoin. Now, the assumption here is that they are moving it to sell it, right? They're moving it to a wallet where they can sell it. And I mean, why, why else would you move it, right? Um, but what we've seen is the speculative, you know, delicate money in crypto saw this movement and have been selling. And that's why we are seeing this downward pressure the last few days. Uh, I believe the biggest reason that we're seeing a, a couple red days is that, you know, people are, are counting on the U S to sell this $2 billion worth of, uh, Silk Road Bitcoin. Now, the, the interesting thing is the timing here, because it was just last Friday, Friday or Saturday, when uh, RFK Jr. and Trump made statements about using this very Bitcoin, this Silk Road uh, Bitcoin that the uh, government holds, both RFK and Trump were saying that they were going to use it as a strategic reserve. Well, they won't be able to do that if, if the government just sells it before either of them can get into office. So again, guys, you, you got to watch what the current administration is doing, not what they're saying, because they're, they're, they're talking pretty. They're talking real nice and, you know, just like Trump, they're, they're saying that they're going to reverse all of this hostility that we've seen over the last four years. And now they're going to play nice, at least until the election. Oh, guys. Um, but not even then, you know, they, they say one thing, the Democrats are saying one thing and stabbing us in the back the very next moment. So... I mean, what do you do? Like, where where do you go from from that? Um, now, we did as far as that two billion in seized Silk Road Bitcoin. We we had Trump and we had RFK saying what they would do if they were elected, right? Well, at Bitcoin Conference, we also had Cynthia Loomis, the senator for Wyoming, uh, take stage, and she is not saying what she's going to do if she's elected. She is putting forward a bill right now that has, uh, you know, things to do with this uh, seized Bitcoin and some other things about buying Bitcoin. She is introducing that bill now. So again, guys, <laughs> it's just funny the timing of this movement of this Bitcoin because Cynthia Loomis's bill that she's putting forward is going to be, uh, you know, at least that part of the bill is going to be meaningless if the government doesn't own that Bitcoin anymore. So, um, bye bye strategic reserve, I guess, unless, you know, whoever wins or, or a bill gets passed, um, saying that we're going to buy more back. That that Bitcoin, if they sell this, guys, it's it's gone. That strategic reserve that everybody's uh, hoping that they can do something with, they're not going to have that Bitcoin anymore. So, um, just interesting, very interesting on the timing there, guys. Now, one last thought, guys. Now, I had my mind changed on a subject in my last video, as you guys know, if you watched my last video. If you haven't watched my video, guys, go back to that last video. Uh, the title is Crypto Cat Trio Bitcoin Conference Takes uh, Center Stage, I believe. Go back and watch that video. Great video. I had Andy Louie and Sam on 
the channel and they had some excellent insight. Now, Andy actually ended up changing my mind on something. And, you know, up until we, I, I filmed that video, I was kind of under the impression that voting single issue on crypto was kind of, uh, you know, kind of an ir irresponsible thing to be doing because there's more to life than just crypto, right? Well, what Andy said was that, you know, voting uh, single issue on crypto basically isn't just single issue because you fix the money and you fix the, you, you know, the, the famous saying is you fix the money, you fix the world. And he's absolutely right. Crypto and Bitcoin fix so many more issues than just a single issue thing. So really, I've changed my mind on that. Um, you know, voting single issue on crypto is really not a single issue at all. So um, thanks to, th to Andy, credit to him for, for bringing up that point, which was very, very valid. Uh, but guys, again, if you're going to vote single issue on crypto alone, I mean, I think after I've shown you guys that clip of Trump saying that he's being nice, playing nice until the election, and then we have the current administration that is just has been hostile for four years and now is talking out both sides of their mouth. Honestly, if you're going to vote pro crypto, I think your only option is RFK Jr. Now that's obvious, uh, you know, admittedly, that is my opinion. Uh, and I don't, I'm not telling you who to vote for. Okay, guys, I, I'm not voting. Okay. Um, and so why would I expect you guys to vote one way or the, or the other when I'm not voting? I don't care. Uh, all I, I, I just hope that you guys are honest with yourselves about expectations on who you're voting for. And I think, you know, in my opinion, the only pro crypto candidate that we honestly have is RFK Jr. You know, he has a large portion of his own wealth in Bitcoin. So he's got skin in the game. Um, and if you've watched him speak about it, he truly understands Bitcoin, understands the freedom, understands the necessity for freedom of transaction. Um, and he, he understands so much more about how crypto fixes so many different things and holds, holds the government responsible for their, their actions, uh, because they can't just print money out. Um, if we're on a Bitcoin standard, they can't pr print money out and just use it frivolously for whatever they want without any accountability. Um, so guys, I don't know, you know, RFK, RFK Jr. In my opinion is the only pro crypto candidate. So you, you know, you can, you can say that, well, Drake, that's throwing your vote away. Um, and yeah, I mean, maybe it is, but if you're going to vote pro crypto, throwing your vote away, I guess, is the only way you can do it. Who knows, guys? If you know, we have, you know, like Trump was uh, claiming there, we have 150 million people in uh, crypto. Now, I, guys, I don't know that we have, if that number is that big. I would say more likely we're at about. 50 to 80 billion or 50 to 80 billion, 50 to 80 million uh, crypto voters in the United States. But guys, if we would just stop with this mindset of the only two options are dumb and dumber uh, and just voted for what truly mattered, guys, we might 
I mean, we are the people. We have more power than we think. So, I don't know, guys. Again, I'm not telling you to vote one way or the other. Uh, just something to think about. So, um, tomorrow, guys, I am going to be live streaming with the Fed uh, press conference. So, you can look forward to that. Um, I think it'll be an interesting one. It's likely that there won't be a rate cut, but it is the immediate meeting before we do get a rate cut. And, uh, you know, the markets are, per, uh, are pricing in a 100% chance that we will get a rate cut in September, which is the next FOMC meeting. So I think this, what, what Pal says tomorrow is, is going to be really interesting. So join me tomorrow. I'll be, uh, live streaming that it's 12, uh, 1230, I believe, um, mountain standard time, 1030 Eastern time. If you guys want to join me, uh, again, I'll be live streaming. So tune in and I will see you guys then. Bye.